Shmai guys, it's Dan from WWS and today I'm going to be taking you through the steps to weathering your logo using the brilliant weathering powder system manufactured and supplied by WWS. So just getting started with the things you're going to need. Obviously you're going to need your weathering powders, I'll be talking you through all the powders um, when we come to them and obviously you're going to need your engine or model you're going to be weathering. You're going to need an array of different brushes from flax to detailing brushes to thins and whatnot through there. You're also going to need a small little screwdriver, something like that, just to uh, remove detailing parts so they don't get damaged within the process of doing the weathering. You're going to need a few cotton buds, some sort of spatula or a spoon or something along the lines of that to decant the powders when we mix them up. A set of gloves, trust me, you're going to need these ones, it's going to get very dirty and very messy. Um, I can assure you that from experience some acrylic thinners and a pot or two just to mix the powders in and so to do some other little tricks and tips that I'm going to show you in a bit. We're also going to need um, matte varnish, any generic varnish will do uh, as long as it's matte because the last thing you want to do is put a lot of time into your lovely weathering job and pick it straight up and the next thing you know you've got a nice big old fingerprint on the side of it or you've totally wiped the powders off yourself. Um, last but not least, you're going to have to have the trusty cupper. It's not going to hurt anyone to have a cup around the side. First things first, let's get started. The engine I'll be weathering today is a Class 37. Uh, being a Welsh company, I thought it would be rather fitting to use a Welsh Class 37. As you can see here, Taft Murder, and it's a Cardiff Camden engine. Yep, thought it would be rather fitting for this video. Uh, one thing I recommend beforehand is if you have any detailing parts that come with the logo, or you have an older logo like this Lima engine and you want to fit detailing, uh, such as the aerials, uh, the ETS jumper cables, vacuum pipes, stuff like that. Get them on before the weathering job, give them a little paint up and let it totally flash off. Um, reason being for this, once it's on it will blend a lot better than if you were to put it on afterwards because they just stand out like a sore thumb. Uh, so first things first, what we're going to do, we're going to take a big flat dry brush such as this one, and make sure it's nice and clean and we're just going to dust the logo off. Gonna want to get all the dust off from where it's been sitting. Personally, what I do when I'm weathering, I highly recommend removing the body away from the chassis. That allows you to put more detail into the chassis without getting it on the body and vice versa. And it's just a little bit nicer to hold the body when you're weathering the body and not take off all the powders you've just put onto the chassis. So we'll uh Obviously refer to your manufacturer's instructions that come with the locomotive on how to safely and securely remove the body. So as you can see there we got our two separate elements of the locomotive. We've got the chassis here and just the body on its own. Okay so I'm going to get started on the chassis first. I like to start on the chassis uh, and then we can move to the body then. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix up uh, weathering powders for the chassis. As I'm sure if you've seen a locomotive or a train in real life, um, it's not one solid colour, it's a bit varied. Whereas we will be building up powders from the brake dust to grease, soot, stuff like that, I like to get a nice dark brown base layer onto the chassis on the bogies, the fuel tank and stuff like that. So for that what I'm going to use, I'm going to use some light earth, just there. I'm going to use a little concrete dust and a little metallic iron. So what we're going to do, those mixing pots I showed you earlier, or lids I should say in this case, I'm just going to move this out the side a moment. Whereas I just added three and a half, uh, four scoops of the light earth, I'm just going to add one and a half of the concrete dust. That's to give it a little more texture and to vary the tones of the brown. Pop the lid back on there. I said one and a half, I put two, just make it a little more heavy. Okay. And now with the metallic iron I am only gonna put two. So get two nice little spoons there. Okay, lovely. Okay. Now this is totally up to you, at the end of the day you decide what tones you want. Um, if you're a very prototypical mod modeler it's going to depend on where you, where your layout's based, where your logo's based, what sort of work it was doing and such as that. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to want to take a flat brush, just a generic small flat brush like so, and we're going to 
work the powders in together. Here is your, we're going to try and get a nice coat of this lovely brown colour, grime colour we've just made up, onto the borgies here, the fuel tanks, that borgie, and the front ends of the buffer heads, uh, the vacuum pipes and the buffer beam in general along there, just along here. Um, what I would say is be very careful, um, the last thing you want is to be getting any powders into the working mechanism of the uh, model here. You have a little armature in here and um, it needs to be very clean for it to run well. So just make sure that you are cautious about where you're putting your powders. For this one, you're just going to use a widespread brush, just something along the lines of this, and you're basically going to pick the powders up, going to drop them in. Okay, and then with the same brush, you're just going to brush it in. You're going to want to get them into those nooks and little crannies. Yeah, that's going in rather well. Press it in. Just get a little tap, get off the powders that we don't want. And then the brush that we mixed it with, because it's going to have fragments of the powder left on it, we're just going to give it a little brush down. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to work on is adding black soot to around the springs and the axles to represent grease and obviously some little pet uh, diesel spills coming out of the fuel tanks. So I'm going to use the black soot. I'm just going to pop that open. A bit of a mix up. Something like that. Beautiful. Just add it to the axles. On the springs. Let me do some of the steps. Shock absorbers and springs there. And basically, we're just breaking up the main tool that we've just put on uh, to begin with. Got a little tap up. Okay, so now we're going to start building up with the black. You're going to want to cover the entire body in a nice coat of the black, soft black. Get it all into the grills, and the same as before, same as all the little crevices. Get it all over the body. Like I said on the past part, don't be afraid about putting too much powders on because the next uh, tip I'm going to show you is um, actually taking it off. I'm uh, letting you into a bit of a weathering trade secret there. So we're just gonna wanna give it a good coat then all along you, all along the side of the body. Make sure it gets into all the little crevices. Be in a black color and it gets into like this little door frame here and stuff like that. That's gonna make it really stand out and pop. And you wanna get it all into the grills, nice and messy, all along the top. Like I said, don't be afraid to absolutely lather this on. I'm going to want to do that all across the body. Okay, so now I just want to get the bulk of it off. As you can see, that looks absolutely awful. But this is where the little cotton buds come into play. What you do is grab a cotton bud can dip it into acrylic thinners, very nice and wet, but then take a lot of the thinners off. You just want it damp, you don't want it saturated. And then we're just gonna clean it off. Let's give it a nice, dirty, streaky effect. Just so I can show you a little closer, just pulling down. make some nice effects be it, under the grills like it's been leaking oil or soot or something and just leave a bit of that black weathering powder there like that just tidy up the other areas so you're getting a nice effect something along the lines of that so I'm gonna work at this just taking the rest off and um, I'll catch up with you in the next part of the video Okay, so 
Now that I've finished uh, taking a lot of the powders off the sides, you can see we have a nice streaky effect coming all from the grills and the roof. And as such, all along here, especially here and here. And what that's represented is all the dirt that's built up on the roof over time. With the rain, it's washed it all down the sides, and that's going to give you that really realistic, streaky looking finish that you see on these type of locomotives. Um, so it's going to be the exact same thing for the other side of the engine. You can add as many little techniques as you'd like to get the streaky finish you want. You can go really light and take most of it off and just leave it in the grills. You can go really heavy by only taking a little off. Um, and just generically do it until a point where you're happy. Uh, personally, once you've got to this level and before you start on anything else, I like to give it a little coat of matte varnish. That's just a lock in these powders. Um, so when you're working on the other side and it's laying down, it's not going to take anything off. Um, so now we're going to get started on the roof. Uh, the roof is a generically pretty easy one. Um, we're going to be using the black sub again, so we're just going to move that to the side a minute. We're going to clean off any powders that we don't want there with our long flat brush. Make sure it's nice and dry and clean. Same with the noses because the powders that we're going to be putting onto the roof are going to make their way onto the noses either side uh, just in front of the cabs. So what we're going to use for this one is metallic iron and a bit of concrete dust. Not a lot of the concrete dust, it's only to lighten it up a tiny bit. So we're going to grab our dish that we were doing the mixing. And you can see already how the concrete powder, uh, the concrete dust powder is lightening it up ever so slightly. And that's what we're after. We're after a, not a black, but almost like a black, browny, dirty grey from where all the soot from the exhaust um, and generic elements of the real world have built up along the roof because uh, it's not something I guess clean very often, if not at all, on these engines. So, what we're going to do, get a nice bit on the brush, chuck it straight down the middle, make sure there's a nice bit on there, get some on the noses, don't be shy. Grills, exhaust port. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna work it in. And work it in. Just gonna tap the rest off. You could see the big lumps falling off there, but the main thing is, is that we've got that main dirty covering of that dirty grey. Now with the roof, the next technique we're going to use, we're going to get the black soot, get that bag out. And we're going to add it to the exhaust ports here and here, for the class 37, that's the exhaust arrangement. A little bit down on the ribs of the uh, roof, a little bit on the boiler port, and a little bit, well, I say a little bit, a little bit more on the... Uh, fan here. So we're gonna take over there, put it in the boiler port, something like that. Beautiful. Plain. And if you're not happy with that, get a little more, put some more on. We'll add a little more to these exhausts, really pile the black soot on there. Just feather it in. A little on this rib here. Making these little details pop. Okay. Give it a little tap like a before. I'm just going to add a little more black set to the top of the noses, um, on top of the noses. 
And what that's going to do, that's going to really dirty things up for us. Just give it a nice dusty, warm, work warm look. Beautiful. Looking at the engine, I want the exhaust a little darker. I'm going to show you a little technique here, is where we get a nice clean mixing pot, and that are acrylic thinners and our black soap. What we're going to do is decant a very small amount. That's more than enough, if not too much. And we're going to take our brush, a nice fine tip brush, we're just going to damp, damp our brush. We're going to mix all those powders together. Something along the lines of that. That is great. And we got like a nice pasty substance. And it'll still dry matte, so we're going to get that lovely sooty effect. We're going to just work around the exhaust. Just like that. And now that looks like a proper class 37 exhaust where it's been building up, it's been spitting oil, all that sort. So we're just going to let that dry off just a bit. So the final step to our weathering here is going to be the nose, is the nose end. The way I like to weather the nose ends is imagine they've got really, really dirty on a job out and now they need cleaning off. So we're actually going to replicate that exact theory. Going to take our black set, going to get a nice helping of it. I'm just going to get the noses nice and black. So we've got a nice even covering, just like that. And again, same as the last time, knock off the excess. And just like the sides, we're going to take our new clean cotton bud, going to dip it in our thinners, get most of it off, and we're just going to streak it down. What this is going to do, it's going to give the effect that it's been cleaned in the devil with a nice oily rag. Uh, but they have managed to get all the spots and there's some build up left in certain areas where they just couldn't get to or didn't have the time. Take the more dry end. Well, give it all. And you should end up along something along the lines of a nice dirty nose end like that. So I'm just going to do the other side and uh, I'll be straight back to you. Okay guys, so that's all the uh, dark shades of powder done now. The last little things we're going to add are little uh, rust spots using the absolutely brilliant pigmented uh, deep rust and light rust. Uh, we're going to mix them together, little bits on their own, and not a lot because at the end of the day rust resembles something that's ready to be on the scrap line. We want to resemble something that's out there working and earning its keep. Okay, so now we de uh, decanted a tiny bit of our deep and um, light rusts into our little mixing pot. Just add in a little bit of acrylic thinners, just to wet it down until we get this really nice colour. This is going to be our main base coat, we are going to add a little bit over the top. And we're not going to do anything drastic, we're just going to dot a little bit under the grill maybe. Streak it down ever so slightly until we're getting something along the lines of that. The, the footsteps. A little more of the grill, stuff like that. Light powder. Decant a tiny bit. Wet it up again. And to the same spots as we just applied the original powder. We're going to add this, just to give a little effect of deeper rust. Just the bottoms and stuff like that. 
Okay, and now that's fully done. The last thing you're going to want to do now to finish off this job and make sure it all stays in place is give it a nice coat of matte varnish uh, just to make sure all your hard work that you've done actually stays where you left it. You're going to want to hold it at a nice arm's width and give it a little dust in. And now you're going to want to set this to the side and wait for it to totally go off. You really don't want to be touching this stuff, otherwise it's going to leave nasty fingerprints in all your hard work that you've just done. Um, and that's probably going to ruin it, guys, to be honest with you. Uh, so make sure you don't touch it. Let it totally harden and flash off. Uh, the next thing you'll see is the locomotive back together and some nice close-up shots of all the um, techniques I just showed you, such as the streaking, the rust spots, the uh, built-up dirt, the exhausts. Um, and stuff along the lines of that. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to watch. I hope you learned a thing or two. I've been Dan from WWS. Um, thank you for joining me. Tell us.